In this video, we'd like to talk about the surface area of a per parametric surface or a parametrized surface in R3. And so I've started this video uh, by sketching just a surface kind of floating in R3 here. There's some coordinate axes for it. So this is the x, y, z coordinates. And a the idea here is that this surface should be parametrized by a vector function. So the vector function is going to be a vector function which is parametrized by two uh, parameters, u and v. So right now I'm sketching some constant u values. So a grid here, I'm making a grid. And then here's some constant values of v. And what I want to know is, so for example here, let's say that r takes maybe a sub-rectangle of this region. Maybe it takes all the points inside this rectangle and it maps them over to the surface over here, and that's how it parametrizes the surface S. So what I'd like to do now is understand how we're going to compute the surface area over here of our surface. And this is very similar. We talked about surface area in a previous section back in chapter 15 of our textbook um, where we used double integrals to compute surface areas. But let's just suppose that we have this point here uh, in the UV plane, and it maps to this point over here on the surface. So this point over here is, say, R of u naught v naught so this is this is our point over here u naught v naught okay and as this point maps so does the grid okay so the grid the blue the blue vertical constant u direction on our grid maps kind of maybe to some curve this way and the red constant v naught direction maps this way and we can imagine the entire grid kind of coming with it here and tracing out this little kind of portion of the surface and so the idea again is that this portion this little perfect grid in the UV plane maps to this curved portion of the surface grid over here and we want to try to compute the surface area and again we've t like I said we've talked about this in a previous section and so the idea is that we want to approximate the surface area by using the tangent vectors to the edges here that we just drew. So I'll do these in green and kind of an orange color. And we can then build a parallelogram which does not live on the surface itself. It's tangent to the surface. So this is a tiny piece of the tangent plane. All right, I'll even shade this in in yellow. And we want to try to compute the area of this tiny piece of the tangent plane. But what we can do, and by the way, um, I'm going to kind of leave off a ton of the details here, but in the notes we talked about these vectors. So the orange vector here, this is the change in, so this is the red direction. So this is the change in the V direction here, right? So, sorry, that's actually the, that's a constant V value, right? So this is going to be related to the change in the U direction. So this is what we call R sub U, which is really just the partial derivative dr du, and that's our tangent vector in the u direction. And the green one's going to be the same idea, except it's the, with a constant u naught, it's the change in the v direction. And so this vector right here is our r sub v, which is just dr dv. Okay, and what we can do now is we can compute the cross product of these two vectors, so these two tangent vectors. These two tangent vectors are a basis of the tangent plane. They form, if you were to take the span of these two vectors and kind of extend out this parallelogram, you would get the entire tangent plane to the surface at this point, okay? And what we want to do now is we want to compute a, the area of this tiny little parallelogram. And as we know, that's related to the normal vector to the tangent plane. So the normal vector is a vector that points this way, let's say, and this vector we're going to call nu. That's a Greek letter nu. And this vector nu is just going to be defined to be the cross product of ru cross with rv. Okay, so this is exactly the normal vector to this tiny piece of, of plane right here. And remember that if the normal vector is built by taking the cross product of r sub u cross with r sub v, um, number one, it's pointing in the proper direction. If you use your right hand rule here, it's going this way, right? So the right hand rule says it's pointing above the surface the way I've drawn it. Number two, the length of this cross product 
this vector is the area of this tiny piece and that's exactly what we want right so the area of this vector nu sorry the the magnitude of this vector nu is equal to the area of our little parallelogram and I'll just draw a parallelogram here and that's big news because that's exactly what we want to do right we want to add up infinitesimal infinitesimal uh, parallelograms and try to build the surface area of the surface now when we do that actually what are we doing we're pulling back so this whole thing right here this piece this this new vector is a function so new is a function of u and v as you vary points over here in the parameter domain you're gonna get different normal vectors right different normal vectors and so the length of this vector the magnitude is also a function of u and v which means what so that means that if we're going to add up all these tiny areas that are produced by this process, we need to pull back. We need to pull back and integrate over here in this domain. Okay, and in this domain, our, our convention is that this domain, I've outlined it in green. So this domain, the parameter domain is called D. All right, and what we end up with is our formula for the surface area. Again, we've talked about surface area before. So the surface area of the surface s this is going to be equal to the double integral over the surface s of one times a tiny surface area element okay so the tiny surface area element is going to be called ds but the s is a capital s this is extremely confusing because this s down here is the surface and this s is the surface area element now if if it becomes too confusing we change the name of the surface okay but the book does it this way the homework does it this way we need to be prepared to see it this way and this is what it means okay so s here is the surface but ds is the change in the surface area now what we want to do is we want to compute this area by pulling back to our parameter domain like I've said right and so what do we have to do well we have to get everything in terms of u and v and so this becomes our integrand all right, and essentially what we've shown here is that our ds element is equal to the length of nu times the area element in the uv plane, the usual da over here. And so this can be computed as nu of uv, length of nu of uv, times du dv or dv du, depending on how you want to compute that. Or if this, if you want to change to polar coordinates or something in the in the parameter domain, you can do that and just treat it like this. Okay. So what we end up with is a formula for the surface area of the surface S becomes the integral over the parameter domain D times the area element. The surface area element is now the length of this normal vector nu as a function of u and v integrated up with respect to a da all right so d by this a i mean area right integrated with respect to area da and so in certain circumstances when the when the domain is very nice we'll see that this can just be thought of as length of nu du dv okay um, by the way if you just hate this greek letter nu and you don't want to write the greek letter nu this can be computed as the length of the cross product that's how we're going to compute nu anyway uh, du dv. And so all of these are acceptable. The bottom couple are the ones we're actually going to use, but this is all how do you compute the surface area of a parametric surface? You use one of these integral formulas.